Hey guys, today's video is going to be all about webhooks and in particular webhooks inside Integromat. Now, if you don't know what Integromat is, it's an amazing tool that allows you to connect different services and applications together and create some really powerful workflows. Now, webhooks can be really useful when you're trying to send data from one place to another. For example, if you have a form on your website and um, when a user submits some data on that form, you want the data to be sent from your website to another application or from your website to Integromat, then using webhooks is a really easy way to achieve that. Now, what I'm going to do in this tutorial, I'm going to first show you how to create a webhook inside Integromat. Uh, we're then going to run some examples where I'm going to try and send some data to the webhook. And then once the data is in our Integromat scenario, we're going to try and create a workflow and pass that data to another module. So with that being said, let's get started. The first thing we're going to do, as you can see, I have my webhook module here. I'm going to click on it and I'm going to go ahead and create a new webhook. First thing I need to do is give my webhook a name. I'm just going to name it uh, webhook tutorial. You can have IP restrictions, you know, so if you want the, the webhook to only work under particular IPs, you can add your restrictions there. Uh, but I'm just I'm just gonna allow it to work anywhere for now. As you can see, I have successfully generated my webhook right here. I'm just gonna copy it to my clipboard. And this thing you see here, what this means is that uh, we need to send some data to this webhook in order to determine the data structure. I'm gonna show you what I mean by by uh, that in a second. So I'm gonna go to this tool right here called Postman. Now Postman is a tool that allows us to make requests, right? So I'm just gonna paste my webhook URL here. And as a method, I'm gonna uh, select post, right? Because I wanna post data, I wanna send data to this webhook, right? I don't wanna get data, I wanna post it. So. Uh, what I need to do next is pass some data into this uh, webhook. And the data is always a key value pair, right? So I'm going to create a key and I'm going to call it uh, name, right? And then the value is going to be my name. I'm then going to create another key and I'm going to call it email. And the value is going to be an email. Right. And as you can see here, the parameters, right, the, the query string is changing on the actual URL. Right. Then I'm going to have another parameter. And I'm just going to say this is a message. Now, when I put when I send this. As you can see, the request has been accepted successfully. We didn't get any errors. So now if I go back to um, to my uh, Integromat scenario here, as you can see, the data structure has been successfully determined. What this means is that the webhook has received my data and now it has it, it, it identified the keys, right? That's the important part. The webhook needs to identify the keys, right? So now, now since the webhook has successfully determined my data structure, right, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn this scenario on. Now, before I turn on the scenario, the first thing I need to check is that my webhook um, schedule is set to immediately. What this means is that the Integromat scenario is gonna run every time this webhook receives some data, right? So um, you could run this scenario once a day, you know, and what this is gonna do basically, um, it's gonna, even though your webhook might have received some requests throughout the day, once a day, the, the 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 webhook is going to run, you know, and it's going to find those requests and run the module with them. Right. However, I prefer to have it set as immediately because this is just more dynamic. You know, as soon as um, as the webhook receives the data, it's going to run. Right. So um, I'm just going to save this and then I'm going to turn on the scenario. I'm going to save it once again. So now um, if I go back to Postman here and I send the same data again, we should actually see the scenario run. So if I go back to the front page here and I reload this, as you can see, we now have a successful run, which happened less than a second ago. 
Now, if I click on details, I should be able to see what happened here. So when I click on this, as you can see, this is the data that the webhook received. So I got the name, right? That's the key and that's the data. I got an email, that's the key and that's the data. And then I got a message, right? So now I know that the webhook is working correct, correctly, right? It's able to receive data and uh, the whole scenario runs when this webhook receives data. Now, the next thing I can do is pass that data to another module. So now I have a Google Sheets module set up here. So I'm just going to open this up. And as you can see, I have my spreadsheet selected. Let me show you the, the Google Sheet. It's right here. So it's just one sheet uh, and I have the same three fields on the on the spreadsheet. Right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to map the values from the webhook to the sheet. Right. Uh, message. There we go. If I didn't determine the structure of the um, of the webhook, which is what we've done at the beginning when we first run the request here, I wouldn't be able to actually map the values to the sheet. That's why it's important to determine the structure of the the data structure of the webhook, right? Because I wouldn't be able to do this thing right here. And if your if the data you're sending to your webhook changes, you know if the if the data structure changes, then you would have to go to your webhook and redetermine this, the data structure. So you would click on this and you would run the, uh, you would send a request to the webhook once, you know, so it determines the data structure um, you're sending. And then you should be um, able to, um, to pass the, again, pass the, the data fields to another module. So now I'm gonna go ahead and save the scenario to apply all the new changes. And now let's go ahead and make the request once again. And now we should have received all the data on the Google Sheet. There we go. Perfect. Okay. Now I want to show you another example with an actual application, right? So uh, many of you might be familiar with Card, right? Card.co is a website builder. Um, and I know it's very popular at the moment. So I want to make um, an example on this, right? So as you can see here, I created a new card website and um, I have a form here. So I went to uh, the elements here, the components, I added a form. And as you can see here, these are all the form settings. Now my goal is to send the data from this form to my webhook. So here on the type, I selected custom, send to URL, right? And then here, this is my, I think that's a, a previous webhook that I have. So let me just copy this one again. Let's just paste it there just to be sure that's the new one. And then the method I'm using Ajax. Now you could use post, right? However, when you use a post request, when the user clicks on submit, they will be taken to a page that has nothing on it. And it would just say accepted, right? So we don't really want that. We want the user to remain on the page when they submit the form. And in order to do that, we need to use Ajax, right? So um, then we have a success message. We have a failure message. And I think that's pretty much it. So we'll click done. And I'm going to click save, publish changes. Okay, and here's the website right here, I'm just going to reload it. Okay, so now I have reloaded the page and I'm ready to enter the information. However, in order to receive this information in Integromat and then be able to pass it on to another module, what I first have to do is redetermine the structure, right? So I'm going to click on this and I'm going to publish some, I'm going to make a request, right? Submit because the field names might be the same, but we don't know if the actual data structure is going to be the same. So it was successfully determined. Right, so now I can go here and assign those um, those fields to my spreadsheet. As you can see, they're different, right? So we now have name, email, and message, right? Before they were different, they were with capital letters, right? Here, I named everything with capital letters. With um, card, they're actually 
with um, with small letters, right? So uh, I wouldn't have known that if I didn't redetermine the structure and it wouldn't have worked, right? So now that the structure is redetermined, I'm able to pass that data to the Google Sheets module. I'm gonna save this. And now let's go ahead and run this once again. Submit. Thank you. And now, there we go, right? So this is it for this video, guys. I really hope I was able to clearly demonstrate how webhooks work and how useful they can be for your workflows. Uh, as always, let me know below if you have any questions, any suggestions. Hit the thumbs up button if you like this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this one and more projects that I have coming out soon. And yeah, thank you so much for watching.